Hey there, Fellowship family. Welcome to your one-stop shop for all things church life. I'm Mark Francis. I'm your host once again for today. We have been engaged in an overflow focus for this entire fall. And it's been exciting to have different episodes where we've gotten a chance to get to know many people here in our Fellowship Bible Church community. And I have more people with me today that I'm excited to introduce and we get to hear their stories and learn about where we've turned the corner in our overflow focus of reaching out to the world around us. So I'm going to turn first to Al and Sherry Pinto. How are you guys? Doing great. Good. Good to see you. Yep. Thanks for coming here. To, again, I, I say this to everybody. You can relax. The lights, the cameras, the microphones, just ignore that everything is going on around us. <laughs> we just get a chance to have a conversation today. Don't worry about the millions of people that are listening. The to millions. <laughs> yes, yes. We have such a raving audience that they love it. You heard him already. This is your first time on a podcast with us, I believe. Yeah. This is yeah. Dave Compton. Pastor of Congregational Care. And seniors. And seniors. Right. Yeah. So you get a whole bag there. But I'm going to ask you a question first, because previously you were an elder. Yep. Yeah. Now, how does that work with, you're probably also one of the newest pastoral members newest here on staff. Newest oldest, probably. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. Not oldest, but newest, yeah. right? Yeah. So... Um, do you retain the elder title? Is it like a Supreme Court justice where you know, you, you're always around? And I, and actually, when I when I took the role, I, I asked the guys on the elder board, you know, does this mean I'm no longer an elder? And Mark Carey's infamous words are, "Once an elder, always an elder." Uh huh. Um, so I get the the benefits of having the title, but not having to attend the board meetings. <laughs> so I think John Kennedy said something like, when he was presenting to Yale or something like that, he could, he said. I've got the best of both worlds. I'm a Harvard graduate, but I'm getting a Yale doctor or honorary degree or yeah. something. But yeah, there you go. That's so, me. No Harvard, no Yale, but uh, so yeah. with congregational care, let's touch on that real quick. What are some of the experiences and roles that you do with that position? Yeah, um, it's a big hat because there's a lot of things that fall under just congregational care, mm -hmm. and this is a good week to as an example because this Saturday. I have a, a kind of a planning and reunion kind of meeting for all the former and current Stephen ministers, mm. which fall under congregational care, which is that ministry of just f coming alongside folks that, mm -hmm. that are in a tough place or just need some, uh, someone to care for them. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, just uh, Monday this week, we had a, a, a member of our uh, fellowship that uh, passed away. Mm. So now i am got the other hat on and, and helping coordinate that funeral mm. and making all those things happen and working with the family and then, of course, with Mark and planning planning the funeral. So the congregation, congregational care hat is a lot of uh, with the uh, Stephen Minister's um, um, caring ministry, uh, the benevolence guys and mm -hmm. the deacons fall under that uh, umbrella as well. And then, of course, the things that we do uh, as they come up with vi um, with um, uh, funeral planning yep. and such. And then visitation used to be part of the, the gig also. But yeah, with the hospital COVID, shutting right? Down. So yeah. how does that work? So fortunately, we have a great contact there at the hospital. Kelly Whitaker works in the Attends uh, FBC chaplains. Here. Yeah, she works in the chaplains department at the hospital. And so even though our staff can't go in and visit folks, um, we get a hold of uh, Kelly. She gets a hold of the chaplains that are hmm. there at Winchester Medical Center and the other hospitals, and they step uh, stop by and visit with our, our members and attendees that might be in the hospital. That's great. So That's neat. So yeah. that's a lot to juggle. But I'm glad that you're here because as we are engaging in this conversation about overflow, the primary purpose of it is the one another passages mm -hmm. and you go to the home center if, if you haven't gotten it yet there's those booklets that have really fancy fun glossy one another passages with little mini devotionals about 20 of them are there and what you are all about dave is i believe one another's you yeah. know loving one another serving one another caring for one another encouraging praying for one another Th that that hat i know is your passion yeah so it's exciting yeah. to have you here to be able to kind of interject with the stories that we hear from the couple I've got over here, Alan and Sherry. So we get a chance to hear from you because I want you just to introduce yourselves of how long you've been attending Fellowship Bible Church. And even beyond that, just tell us a little bit about yourselves, just what you do and uh, 
okay. your family life and all that good stuff. And it's a very generic question, but okay. just talk. <laughs> so we can cover all that? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we've been attending since 2007. Mm -hmm. So 2007. Uh, becoming or making FPC our home was nothing more than the work of the Lord. Uh, we were going through some rough times in marriage. Uh, we had, at that point in time, Anthony would have been about 13. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three sons, mm -hmm. Anthony, Nathaniel, and Victor. Nathaniel would have been... Um, 10. And Victor, <laughs> Doing the math. Victor, yeah. would, have Victor been, would have been eight. <laughs> and Victor would have been eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. so there's three boys. Yeah. And so we were just having a rough time. We originally practiced our faith as, as Catholics. Hmm. Uh, we were both Catholic when we met and got married in the Catholic Church and had begun doing sacraments with our children hmm. in the Catholic Church. Um, but something was just missing. Hmm. And obviously that missing started to affect our marriage. And uh, so as we were missing this, several people in, in so many situations the Lord would put into our lives mm -hmm. that just came alongside of us, were there for us through the tough times, and when we asked the hard questions, would give the tough answers. Mm -hmm. um, so coming to find out, there was people that I work with in Fairfax, some of them, some of them came to church here, other believers that work there that uh, just would answer questions for me when I had them. And uh, so it led us down this path of searching. Mm -hmm. And I believe Sherry probably attended a few churches without mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. as we started to search. Right. Um, but nothing really seemed to fit. And as other people came around us, when Anthony made new friends at school, was he there? Ailer. Middle school, Ailer. Mm -hmm. um, and Nathaniel was making friends. And Nathaniel's first grade teacher. Yeah, first grade came teacher. Came to FBC. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so we, Albert and um, John had developed a really good friendship, and it kind of grew from there as well. So when we did come to FBC, right. um, numer it, it was it was the Lord's working because hmm. there was numerous people in each one of our kids' lives and our lives that all just came here. And I'll never forget the first time we came here, it was a turn around. It was like, there were so many people mm -hmm. that we knew. That all of a sudden, knew. I'm like, oh my yeah. God. And we didn't know they came to FBC. Yeah. We just, oh. Yeah. And so it really was the Lord working in our yeah. lives to put us in the right place. It's neat to reflect back on stories like oh, yeah. that, mm -hmm. you know, and really say, is. that was God. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it was mm -hmm. nothing but that. Yeah. Completely. And you know, we, we kept just watching these people, wondering what they had that we didn't mm -hmm. have. We're like, well, why? Why? Hmm. Um, and never really did any of them push their faith, their beliefs. They just came alongside of us and loved us through it mm -hmm. and, and cared about us, invited us into their homes. And ultimately, we asked the questions to ourselves. ourselves. And I don't know if somebody even invited us here once or twice. I'm sure they did, mm -hmm. and we had accepted. Yeah. I remember once coming and just completely just saying, no, nah, it's not for me. Uh, but as more people came around us, and then we found out that that was, you know, they, they, they came to church here. They had a relationship with the Lord. It's really cool. Hmm. So that's what led us here. So about, I'll ask because, I mean, where then do you consider kind of your, your moment of faith? Like what, was there a light bulb moment or was it a slow progression? Yeah. That occurred. Yeah. I'll jump in. I'll say that mine was really a, a light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. Again, we grew up Catholic. Um, there wasn't a relationship with Christ. It was just going to church, doing your sacraments, going to mm -hmm. you know going to church on Sunday. Um, when we came, I think it was actually Father's Day, the first time we. It was the second time we ever came here. But the first time had been a couple of years before, and there was a video playing, and it was about the lump in the bed. It was about a, a little boy with a ball, and I don't know if anyone remembers that. Hmm. Um, but the moral of the story was a little boy took the ball from someone and his parents caught him and he had to, and he ran away from his parents and he hmm. was hiding in his dad's bed. But the father said to him, there's nothing you can ever do that can make me love you less. And that, and then he referred to Christ in that whole scenario. And now even looking back now, I realize how much more was in the video that was a reference to Christ. Hmm. But when he said, there's nothing you can do that can make me love you less. The same as there's nothing that Christ can do, nothing we can do that would make Christ love us less. Right. That hit home for me. Hmm. Big, and, and it was up on the screen. It was just very, I was. I thought it was very theatrical, but boy, did it, that really hit me. And at mm -hmm. that point, I realized it, it is a relationship. It's what I've what I've done, I've been forgiven for. Mm. And it, it really was truly a, a light bulb moment for me. Yeah. 
Wow. That's cool. Wow. For me, it would have been probably the slow progress, um, just really weighing everything, looking at everything, and coming to understand who the Lord is and how He loves me, and feeling that I know that I can't do anything to gain that love. That was just a free gift, but yet my behavior and my actions should glorify Him and have others look at me and think, wow. There's something about him. Like mm-hmm. We looked at the people we met. Mm-hmm. Wow, there's something about them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a slow progress. It wasn't like, boom. It was, uh, I became involved as we came here. I did middle school ministry. The boys were attending. Uh, there was some awesome people there. It was, uh, it was a group with T.T. Uh, T. Van Kemper, Lou Wade's. Uh, he, Mike Wade was involved. So a lot of Hutchinsons were involved. So a lot of people were involved in middle school that just really, just helped me grow. I remember one time uh, being there with uh, Brian Carey, and he was involved in middle school. And I said, man, he, he asked me how things were going. And, you know, sometimes we'll just say, oh, things are great, but they're really not. But at that time, things were just really clicking, and, and the Lord was just just bringing us along in our marriage, our relationship with our kids and friends. I said, I'm just waiting for the, the problem to hit. I'm just waiting for the disaster. He says, he says, Al, the Lord's welcoming you into his family. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. So so that's where uh that's how I sort of came along. It was a slow progression, but yet just an awesome thing to mm-hmm. experience. Dave as an yeah. elder, I mean former elder, yeah. I mean, you, you hear and you see stories like that. What what is your take on the body, on yeah. the FBC body? It sounds like the story yeah. of people. Mm-hmm. Engaging with others is so critical. Right. That's what the elders love to hear because uh, many times it's it's the uh, big problems that get thrown into the elders' lap. Um, but when you hear stories like that, and, and if they do happen a lot at FBC. It's where mm-hmm. it's not Mark Carey that's, uh, you know, it could be a nice sermon, but that's, you know, once a week. But it's the people that they... That you haven't that you run into and you have contact with in your life that makes the difference and it's an old mm-hmm. discipling thing that mm-hmm. FBC has been about from the very very beginning mm-hmm. and um, yeah that's that's what it's all about. I, now I've got you talking. I've got to ask your story because I've heard it once before. But prior to you coming on staff, there was almost a light bulb moment for you that occurred within a worship time. How did how did that? I mean, it's, it's kind of it's not a. It's not a salvation come to faith story, but it was like, a, oh, how do I now serve in my life? Yeah. <laughs> what do yeah. I? What am I doing with myself? Yeah, here? I always tell people, be careful of what sermon you listen to, and be careful what you pray for, <laughs> uh, because in 2019, Mark, I think it was in June, Mark gave a sermon, and he talked about um, Jesus being a disruptive force in in the world, and that Jesus disrupted the disciples, he disrupted the Pharisees. And at the end of the service uh, or of his sermon, Mark said, "We we need to be disrupted. God needs to disrupt our lives." Mm. And uh, there is probably only two other times in my life that I remember being physically shaken. One was when I got saved, and another time was when I was uh, in my early twenties. Uh, but you know, for whatever reason, I, at the end of that sermon, uh, at, we're singing the last song. I'm literally hanging on to the chair in front of me because, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't sing. I, hmm. I'm just like overcome with what, holy cow, what, what, you know, what, uh, how does God want to disrupt me? And so I started praying, and I just said to the Lord, "Okay, you disrupted me. Just tell me what you want me to do." You know, would you tell me what you want me to do? And, and I started praying about that and praying about that. That was in 2019. And then the next May, Mike Thomas calls me at work and says, hey, you know, we're Rich Brito's retiring. Jerry Harpel's retiring. We're combining uh, those two positions into one position of um, pastor of seniors in congregational care. And, um, you know, would you be interested and I told, I told Mike uh, Thomas, well, you know, I have to give at least a 30-day notice to where I'm working currently. <laughs> and Mike said, well, I'm not offering you the job. No. I, just, I just want to know if you're interested. Right. Um, and, and so the, the longer story is, you know, I called uh, uh, my oldest brother, I called my other brother, and I called a brother-in-law, all of whom are have been in the ministry and I had highly respected and and uh, and I told him, you know, I asked God 
to disrupt me and tell me what he wants me to do. And now he throws this in my lap. And, and I said, I, I'm afraid to, hmm. s- if, what if I say no? What if I look at, you know, finances or whatever, you know, that could come up and, and I say, eh, maybe next time, God, you know, put me, in, you know, I'll take a rain check. And that literally scared me to death that what if I said no? But I had hmm. uh, my, my brothers and brother-in-law were just, uh, were fantastic. And um, it's, it's been a great, I mean, I love the story and hmm. God still speaks. Uh, maybe you've read the, the book of Jonah one too many times. Too many you know? times. <laughs> you don't want to get engulfed by a, a yeah. big fish. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it was an interesting time in my life. So I love the idea of God is disruptive uh, and, and in positive ways. I mean, he's disrupting you guys when you're seek, you know, realizing, okay, there's something going on with your family situation, dynamics, something's not working, and people were surrounding you who are believers, who are pointing you to Christ. Mm-hmm. Dave, you've got you know, the same disruptive force that is like leading you, and you know this is where you're supposed to be right now. As we, as we live our Christian lives, I, I feel like the call to action in our body right here and right now with the sermon series, with this focus, is who around us do we need to have an intentional heart for? Um, you know, last week's sermon was having spiritual goggles on. Mm-hmm. And, and who around us do we need to come alongside and, and, and help show them, point them to the light of Christ? And, and that's the, the tone of the conversation that I, for the next few minutes I wanted to take because, Pintos, I know that you guys have now progressed. Let's fast forward a few years mm-hmm. and you've been matured through, you know, teaching here in Fellowship Bible Church, other people surround you. And now you're realizing, okay, maybe there's a disruptive force that was going on with you. You need to share what you have to others. Tell us kind of where that turned for you of not just being receivers, but then givers of the light of Christ to others around you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let Albert talk. He's got lots of stories, but okay. I, will, so, I, I so. will say I, we both work at Laura Fairfax Community College, Yeah, and I work in an office setting, and he works with our trade students. So he gets a lot of contact with a lot of hmm. different people. Um, and so he has lots of different stories of how he's met people, where they're at, and and. and Given them so like the salvation message, hmm. so I'm gonna let him take that. And Maybe it's kind of fun to have you guys talk about each other, right? Because right, right. <laughs> yeah. that's where I was getting ready to go. With it. I'm like, you know, uh, lately it's just been really been on my heart to to figure out, like you said, you know, put me in these tough situations, Lord, right? Um, but just use me, mm-hmm. right? use me yeah. somehow so that I can glorify you. So so lately I've been you know poking the bear where it's like okay honey so this this is where what we need to be thinking about this is what our next 10 15 20 years lord give us that time that we would have to maybe bless others come alongside others hmm. rather than focusing on ourselves and just saying uh, let's do the best we can let's let's get the most we can and then pass it on as an inheritance to our children right. but how can we pass on the inheritance that Christ has given us right so it's just been really neat how that's just been nagging at me. Um, So being involved here at church, uh, part of the safety team, and I really Mm -hmm. have a heart for those guys. Last week, I Mm -hmm. reached out to a couple guys I had not seen in a while. Um, And again, just because they're coming to FBC, my opinion here, doesn't mean that they're doing great. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. so let's reach within and build those, those people up so that they can share and they can feel that and then want to repeat that for other people hmm. alongside them. So and that's how we reach out. Let me just pause you for a moment because you said you're part of a safety team. Yes. Probably not many people know that that even exists. Yeah. So what what you're doing is behind the scenes making sure that whenever there's large events and gatherings on Sunday mornings and any other time here at the church – that the congregation is safe, the children are safe, the people who are attending are safe, and you have a team that you work with. Yes. And elaborate a little bit more about that because I don't, I only know so much, yeah. but you know, without getting into all the details of <laughs> yeah. revealing secrets around no, here, no, no, but no, like what, just, you know, what do people need to know about the safety team and, right. and then your heart for the people who yeah. are serving with you? Really not a, a secret. I mean, 
I'm open to talking to anybody about it, and I think any of the team members are too. But most of the team members are just here to worship. Mm -hmm. And as we worship, we provide that extra eye, just keeping our eyes and ears Mm -hmm. open, paying attention. Uh, We do have a little pager that if it should go off, it will tell us where to respond within within the church. We also have radios which connect to the officer who's outside, sometimes roaming inside. Mm -hmm. Um, But the team itself might have, uh, I'm just going to take a shot at maybe 40. Uh, I've got to say his name because he is a phenomenal individual, and if it wasn't for this guy, we would still be, you know, Drawing, drawing on the dirt, trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> Bill Norton is yeah. phenomenal yeah. with organizing yeah. and putting things together and challenging you to the next level. Mm. Um, I am what they call the ops guy, so I basically gather up the the, the chicks and, and keep them huddled up and get them going in the right direction. Mm. But everybody is just phenomenal that's on the team. Uh, they, they're there because they want to be. Mm. Um, they love serving. They love being there. So if something were to happen, you'd see these people popping up, and they do have little uh, green IDs, okay. which identify them. So they would pop up and take control and help whoever needs help for whatever reason. And when mm. we say safety, it can be from a lost child to mm. some Someone having a medical issue, helping the medical team, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Keys locked in their cars. Yeah, keys locked in cars. We've done <laughs> well, that's that. comforting so, yeah. to know. So, you know, yeah. so it's grown. some people are now seeing. You know, the is it a sheriff yeah, or who's sheriff. on duty yep, that will sheriff. patrol? That's yes. helpful to know. But just. It's comforting to know, that, okay, yeah. we've got mm-hmm. yeah. and we're a team of people who are there. We like that. We really don't want to be in your face about sure. it because it shouldn't be. Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for that little segue. Yeah. So, <laughs> back, you know, back to the focus of looking around to others and not being inward focus but outward yeah. focus. Um, maybe, again, I like the idea of sharing about each other. So, mm-hmm. yeah. what, what other stories come to mind? Well, Albert, um, and I think Albert and I both have a heart for people maybe who didn't grow up in the church who— mm have come to faith later in their lives mm-hmm. um, who might not know everything about Jesus or what he's done for us or the Bible front and back. Um, and I think that's kind of our passion for both of us. And so Albert has started um, an underground men's group where he's just reaching out to guys that he knows. Um, hmm. One of them was one of the people that we work with and her husband. So he just meets with them. We have a barn. Um, we He invites them to come over and they just kind of talk and you know they pray and then they kind of talk about life and what's going on in their lives currently and i that's a great that's kind of his passion and his gift it truly is um evangelism Mm. and he's great like one-on-one and and, in small groups that that's that truly is the spiritual so these these guys that you're meeting with um would you consider all of them to be to be believers, or is it, just, it is it really a discipleship group of believers, or is it something that like you know is reaching yeah. out to share gospel? Great question. Um, you know, the whole yeah, I'm a believer. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I would say most of them would probably profess that. Yeah. But yet, as you hear them speak about current events and what they would like to see happen in in this in, in the U.S. as things seem to be. Fast forwarding downhill, uh, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound Christ-like. Hmm. So it's hmm. coming alongside people that may profess Christ just by saying, yes, I'm a believer, but yet still haven't started to walk that walk, hmm. haven't dove into his word and learned about mm-hmm. what, what he tells us and, and how he expects us to behave as believers. Um, understanding that, yes, we're going to trip and fall, but dust yourself up, get back up, and realize that you've been saved by grace and grace alone and, and move forward. So uh, so right now, most of them would probably say, yes, I'm a believer. Uh, but my my heart is, I tried just reaching out to, to random people to bring them in, and the Lord just said, uh-uh not working. Hmm. So now I'm trying to reach reach out to individuals that I know here that have a heart to reach out also. Hmm. So I'm reaching out to those guys and I'm like, bring somebody. Hmm. You know, bring somebody with you. I don't care who it is. I don't care what he looks like. I don't care what he does. Bring him. Hmm. Right? So it's, it's basically, again, like Sherry said, accepting these guys where they are. And I'll be completely honest with everybody. It's just, you know, I asked Scott when he said, well, you know, he threw me under the bus and you gave me a call. Or <laughs> Scott Sandmeyer, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. We'll, we'll name like, drop. You're Pastor of local outreach. To hear yeah. Because I, I don't have the recipe. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what's on my heart yeah. and, and just following through with it. 
And as one thing fails, I'm like, okay, that's not the door that's going to open. Maybe this door. And just last week, I reached out to a few guys, and it seemed like that door is going to open. Hmm. And they're possibly going to bring other guys with them. And, and I think that's going to be what's going to really bring these guys together. And maybe, you know, I'm hoping to have too many people that I can't even accommodate them yeah. there. Maybe come come here and say, hey, can we, if it would be allowed to use a room or, or, or something. But it's just been really cool. And uh, you know, the other hard thing that I struggle with, and this is as I mature, um, you know, we all want to protect our home fronts. Mm. And as you're bringing people into your home that you really don't know much about and could really be in a tough way in the mm -hmm, world, mm -hmm. how do you do that? And, you know, reach out but still maintain that safety and feel like lord you got me i know you do um so that's tough so how i mean the question in my mind for those watching and listening is that seems scary mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. i i don't know if i can go outside of my comfort zone to pursue somebody that i may or may not even know to engage them in spiritual conversations what what brought you to I mean, you're smiling and you're, you're thinking <laughs> this is neat and fun and it easy. Is. So how do you, how can you coach and suggest to somebody listening and watching to say what, not that there's a magical step or formula, but what, where does that enthusiasm and passion for others come from? You know, Dave, like you said earlier, you, you, you ask and it's going to come. Um, are you going to accept that challenge? Mm. And uh, like Sherry said, I do, I do some teaching at the college. And I recently did a class in Vent Hill. Um, it's, uh, it's an HEO class, heavy equipment operator, and I do the core part, which is basic construction, safety, and math, and so forth. So what I do, I'm extremely welcoming to everybody. I get along with everybody. I'm pleasant with them. I don't let little interactions in the class. If stu two students don't get along, I... I I just interact in a way that makes him realize, hey, you know what? He, he's pretty cool. Mm. Um, so the last class I had, there was this guy who'd come in. He'd fall asleep during class. He'd start snoring and, mm. and just a uh, you know, complete train wreck. Mm. And one time he said, man, I've got this many kids, and I'm just trying to work two jobs. I'm working overnight. So I looked at him, and I said, hey, you know what? Why don't you go outside, go out in your car, take a nap when you're ready to come back. We'll just start up where he left off. So this guy, this was probably the second second week or so, and we had about what six weeks of class, I guess it was. Um, so as it progressed, just interacting with him here and there, just asking him how things were going that I admired that he was working two jobs yeah. and taking a class to try to improve himself. He had one interaction on the last day where uh, he didn't interact very well with an, a, a possible employer. And at that point... Um, somebody else was like, well, you know, completely wanted to push him to the side and forget about him. I'm like, hey, you had a bad day. You know, mm. get over it. Dust off. Get up. Mm. Um, so after class, um, when everything was done and done and said, everybody in the class has my personal number because that's how we communicate with them if class is canceled or not. So he sent me a text. He's like, man, it was so awesome having you in class, brother. He says, I'm thinking about taking a class with you just to be around you again. How do you do it? I said, well, you know, there's thank the, God. There's the opportunity. There's that open door. Yeah, right? and you know what? You, you kind of uh, implied this, but um, God, does, God isn't concerned about our degree or concerned no. about our amounts of experience no. or training or speaking ability or anything else. Mm -hmm. He just wants to, you, we just want to be used. Yeah. And God will put us in the right place at the right time, in the right environment, mm -hmm. and it'll all happen. Yeah. Uh, there's plenty of examples in the Bible Absolutely. where it wasn't the rock star person that that uh, God used. It was yeah. the, the person. Was the that, Al Pinto. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, when, when <laughs> Israel's looking for a king, exactly. you, know, you, you yeah. think that essentially it's all the big, fancy, tough guys, and Samuel's yeah. going down the list, and he's pointing out, oh, it's you, the older son. You look good. No, yeah. no, no. And then finally, I'm even looking at it, pulled up First Samuel 16, essentially looking at all the appearances, and... The Lord told Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature because I have rejected him. But God sees not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Right. And, you know, and then 1 Corinthians talks about all the, you know, with not superiority of speech or wisdom or anything yeah. that Paul is saying that yeah. it's not from me, it's just Christ in me. And yeah. so there's this idea that 
we're just vessels, right? I mean, we're just yeah. to be used. And I love your story, Pintos, because people were doing that to you, mm -hmm. to circle around you, mm -hmm. to bring you now to a place where you're able to do that. Yeah. Dave, I'll ask you the same question. I mean, what, you, being in the congregational care hat and, and having a, a heart for others, what, you know, <laughs> How do you come to a place where that comes natural? Like, what what are you really yeah. to to get outside of your shell? Like, yeah. what does it take to say, okay, take that next step of well, serving yeah. and I'll, helping others? I will tell you, it doesn't take much uh, because there are tons of people that are hurting, or you say, "Hey, how you doing, Al?" and they'll say, "Hey, I'm doing great." But there's something else mm -hmm. going on a couple layers down that they don't want to tell you about or, they, or they're too ashamed to tell you about or they're whatever. Um, so um, I will tell you in the, in the last couple of years with COVID, I mean, there's been that's enough to add stress to anybody's lives. But yeah. even without COVID, there's, there's within our, an arm reach of everybody, there's someone that, that mm -hmm. just needs a hug, needs a smile. And and it doesn't take much for them to to really let you know what's going on in their lives. So are people and, coming to our church doors, you know, basically saying, "Hey, here I am. I need some help. I need, you know, you know that um, I need care. I need service. I need, yeah, you know, assistance in life in general." Uh, I would say it happens rarely. Mm -hmm. um, in the time that I've been there, there's maybe been three or four people in the last year that have actually knocked on the door and said, "I'm just at." my wits and can mm -hmm. you help me out? And um, I know the times when I've dealt with folks, it's we bring them in, we talk to them, pray with them, and we're not a social agency. Right. And uh, we refer them to folks that really can help them out. But as far as their spiritual needs, we'll take them as far as they want to go. Um, you know, they might come in looking for somebody to fill in their, fill up their car with gas. Yeah. Um, but we all know that's just... Uh, that's just a band. But that's band. but that's rare. I think really the the situations of who are we building relationships with? You know, who are those that God has placed us in their circles? <laughs> and then our our spiritual antennas up. Yeah. Are our eyes seeing them the way God sees them. Mm -hmm. I'll just let you guys wrap this up and close. What kind of concluding thoughts do you guys have of of how you know, what is kind of a, the call to the church right now? Like what, what would, you know, what would our, a vision of just the three of you guys be for Fellowship Bible Church to, to be an outward focus church? Yeah, I'll, I'll start off and then, then you, the Pintos can take the rest of the time. Uh, but <laughs> Don't leave me too much. Yeah, the kind of my mantra in congregational care um, and seniors is be there, care, share, hmm. And be aware. Hmm. Um, you just gotta show up. Just be there and be there in people in someone's life. Uh, get get out of the house. Get out of your shell. Get out of your comfort level, and just be used. And if you're there, um, then you can care and share, and then be aware of what else is going on in people's lives. And um, our verse that we kind of use in congregational care and seniors is is Acts chapter two, as far as what the early church did, they went out and they helped mm. each other out and they sold property and they uh, uh, met the needs of, of the early church. Um, so that's kind of my, uh, if I had to encourage anybody, I would just say, be there. Mm. Um, whether it's your next door neighbor or whether it's the person that you're best buddies with at, at Fellowship Bible Church. Mm. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I think to follow up with what Dave said, um, it's important to know that you can invite someone here hmm. and and bring them to church with you. And that could be just that little that little bit of what they need. Hmm. Because yeah. they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. They don't know what a church might look like. We had a young lady who came to church with us last week. Um, she was like, wow, your church is so big. She came from a very, very small country church. But you, you just don't know where people are in their lives. And I think the easiest outreach is to invite them to church. That's an easy thing. Yes, right? exactly. It, exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, follow the stars coming up. Invite them to yeah. follow the star just yep. so that yeah. they can see yep. what church is about. Because it might be completely different than what they think. Yeah. And I mean, it even comes as far as, you know, what do I wear? She, she asked me, what, what do I have to wear? I'm like, you can wear whatever you want to wear. It's casual. You can wear a dress, whatever you want. I think we just need to meet people where they are and invite them to come to church. Yeah. And let them see it from there and just to plant that seed. That's great. Now. Yeah. I had something in mind and I yeah. lost it. Yeah. So uh, where are these people? He said, um, and 
and how do how do I do it? Yeah. Just keep your eyes open. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They're there within yep. arm's reach and they're at work. They're, you know, walking through the grocery store potentially. I mean, mm-hmm. wherever you are in life, the Lord is going to put these people in your path if you have your heart in the right place, is, is my thought. You, you don't have to sit there and look for them. You don't have to search for them. You don't have to, you know, turn it a word and, and grip and try to find somebody and mm-hmm. pull that person towards you. Uh, it's just coming alongside and making friends. Uh, like I said, I could tell you story after story, uh, you know, neighbor, current neighbor that we have who— um, Interesting individuals, to say the least, but just coming alongside of him and, uh, you know, praying for him as his wife had COVID and, and taking stuff. And that's the other thing I really, uh, you know, if you are blessed with finances and, you know, we, we, we're we blessed to be able to have a farm, use that stuff somewhere mm. in the Bible. Tell mm. me where it is, but I mm. just, I know I've read it. Use your riches mm. to make friends and come alongside people. Yeah. And that makes such a difference. So mm. often we get so wrapped up in ourselves and worried about that. You know, it's it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Use that to build the kingdom of God, like mm-hmm. you said. And and there's just such a great re- reward that comes with that as you come alongside people. Yeah. Well, you guys make it seem easy, and I think it is. I, oh, it's yeah. just walking right by there. the Spirit day by day, mm-hmm. letting Him lead and guide us. And we, you know, whoever comes across our way. How can we reach out? And yeah, then, and uh, with the understanding that we're we're not perfect, right. you know, and and I'll tell you, you know, people look at us and say, "Well, have they got it together?" Right. But right. we've we we're we we don't we're, have it perfect. You this know. is not a pedestal episode podcast where we're all yeah, perfect here. Yeah, yeah. no. no. no, no, no. Oh. So I think that <clears throat> transparency with mm-hmm. people and that Absolutely. hey, I struggled and everybody Absolutely. will, and um, the difference is I've got I've got the Lord. Amen. Taking me right through, yeah. Um, from from beginning to end. And Absolutely. how can we acknowledge that so people around to see that? Right. So, well, you guys are great. Thanks so much for the conversation, right. and I, I really hope that it was encouraging and um, you know inspiring to everybody else watching and listening because I, I really feel like that's where God is calling our church right here and right now. And yeah. and just man, we just need to be in the moment to to see the world around us the way God sees people. Yeah. And we've got Follow Star coming up, so put that on your calendars, yep. December fourth and fifth. I, I know there's plenty of people volunteering and serving, but there's still a few final needs. So go to the website for that, fbcva.life, and then you can click on the Follow the Star link. But more importantly, it's that I think about inviting people. And that's a simple, yeah. easy thing to do. It, it's very low risk for somebody to say, oh, yeah, I'll come do that. Yeah. You know, we can stay in my car, have them over for dessert or hot yeah. chocolate afterwards, yeah. talk about just what they saw. I mean, it's a great opportunity. And then we can move down the path and then it's church and then it's Christmas Eve and, and whatever else happens. Signs <clears throat> signs in your yard. We'll put yeah. up signs for politics all day long. <laughs> hey, right. Let's get yeah. some signs up for Fall of the Star. Yeah. So on Sunday, come you, because on, in the lobby there's little business cards, there's yeah. postcards, there's things you can grab to help um, just be tools for you to use to invite people around. So, yeah. Dave, Sherry, Al, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, And on the podcast, continue to share your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you guys that are watching and listening, fbcva.life slash podcast. Keep us posted and share this with anybody else. We'd love to just gain more listeners. And as I said last week, there are different behind the scenes needs with even doing an episode like this. So if something that's behind the scenes and tech related and doing some of the video work and doing some of the editing um, is up your wheelhouse, let us know. We'd love to get you plugged in to serve in that way. So thanks for watching and listening. And until we chat again, we'll say Christ be the focus of our lives each and every day.